well. Ryan joins us now on the sofa. Uh, Ryan, tell Hi, us Ryan. a little bit about what happened to you on this night out. Yeah, so it happened last year. Thoroughly traumatic. I've only spoken about it this year. I did an interview with the Daily Mirror and I just explained exactly what happened. And in a nutshell, I've come on the channel before to speak about it, but I went to a nightclub in Soho and I momentarily left my drink to the side, returned pretty much instantly. And then suddenly I just got this, ho I, this horrible feeling just overcame me. And it was complete delirium. I had to go back to the loo to sit down. I had a pounding headache. And then a, a symptom of spiking is complete memory fragmentation. And I just can't piece together exactly what happened. I mean, my memory was just so foggy. I, rem I can't remember leaving the club. I remember hurting my leg. And then the next part of my memory that night was I ended up in a car and I couldn't leave the vehicle. And again, a part of the symptoms of spiking is that you lose all fear and rationality. And I was just screaming. At, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it was the perpetrator in the car, but this person wouldn't let me leave. And it just escalated. I was able to get out, thank goodness. But I had no fear whatsoever. I mean, this is what I said to the reporter from the mirror. I could have easily have jumped into the tent. That, there was wow. like oh no gosh. fear. So what, what, were they speaking to you, this person? Well, yeah, they were speaking to me, but I, what can't, were they saying? I can't remember what they were saying. I mean, it's just so dazed. It's very, like I said, fragmented recollection of what happened. And you don't know who he was. Don't know who he was. And I didn't, I didn't report it because I thought, what is actually going to be the result of reporting it? And since then, I've now Do you regret not reporting discovered. it? Well, yeah, I, I regret not reporting it because the reports help the enforcement mm. against spiking. Mm. And that's essential to reduce the number, the incidence of spiking that's taking place around the UK. And I was looking into stats in 2023, 6,700 reports were received by the police. But in order to get a, success, a successful prosecution, you need to get tested ideally within 12 hours, which is such a short Wow. Time span. There, there has been a growing trend of people waking up the next morning after a night out and saying, I feel so bad and I don't remember anything. I swear I had two or three drinks, which normally is OK for me. I fear I may have been spiked, but they'd never know, would they? You'd never know. And again, that's the trouble we're having here is that you need to get tested because if the CPS have any chance of prosecuting someone that might have committed the spiking offence, they need the evidence and the only official route to get testing is the police testing. And that, like I said, the drugs can actually leave the body within 12 hours. You can theoretically get tested within seven days because there might be a presence of drugs in the body up to seven days. But it's crucial That's to very get the testing. I hadn't, I hadn't heard about that at all, the process of actually finding out what's been in your body. Um, in terms of you're, you're a man. Yes. And we often talk about spiking in terms of particularly young women getting spiked on mm. nights out by pred predatorial men. We don't talk about it as much when it comes to men, but do you believe it's just as prevalent? Well, in terms of the numbers, recent stats would suggest that it's a majority of women. I think around 74 percent of reported cases involve women. And yes, it is a majority. It's an issue affecting the majority. Uh, women is the majority. But again, it can happen to anyone. And that's what I'd like men to are less, Perhaps men are less likely to report it, maybe out of well, embarrassment it. or they just don't see it potentially in the same way as, as, as young women. I don't know. Well, I speak to a lot of friends and a lot of male friends and they've come forward to me since I've spoken about this. And they've said that they've been spiked. But mm. because there's a, a certain stigma, I would say, attached to men reporting spiking incidents, they're not coming forward. So mm. that might suggest why the stats are... For, uh, uh, reflecting women coming forward uh, in the majority. But this is why I'm wanting to speak out about it. This is why I'm working with the amazing Greg Smith, who's the MP for Buckingham. Mm. And we're working on this campaign to ensure that people can go to clubs or can go to bars or pubs or wherever, wherever it is, any place that serves alcohol, so and feel safe. Practically, how is that done? I think you want to introduce uh, drinks covers, don't you? So how does that work? Is it a device that goes on top of a glass? How does it work? Yeah, so I've been to lots of clubs and bars and I've used these covers which are made out of aluminium and they're disposable. So you, they've got an adhesive size, so you can stick it on top of the glass and then it just covers the drink. And you also know if it's been tampered with. And at the moment, 
I've been going casually to different venues that serve alcohol. A lot of venues in London where I've been going haven't actually got these covers. And what I'm working with Greg Smith on is to make sure that these covers are provided across the country and it's mandatory as a condition of the licensing uh, if a venue is able to serve alcohol, they need to have these Ah, covers. so you're not going to force everyone, every pub and every bar across the country to uh, make their clients use no, these. No. It's just to have it on offer. On people. offer, exactly. So that's, it won't, that's, I, I support that, I think. Mm. It, it won't be obligatory for people to use it, but obviously it's great to have the option because I just want to make sure that if you're going drinking, you can feel safe. And at the moment, Greg is negotiating with the Tory whip to see if he can get a 10-minute rule bill in the Commons. And if that does happen then, and, and if that is successful, it could get a first reading and then we could see some traction and perhaps change okay. it to legislation. So that's what I'm working on. And I'm going to keep uh, charging forward with Gregor uh, to see some hopefully changes to the law. All right, Ryan, look, listen, really sorry to hear about your, uh, your nightmare experience uh, and well done for Thank speaking you. out about it and all your work, trying to help others too. Now that's Ryan safe. Mark Parsons. Thank you. Yeah, stay safe. <laughs>